It's not the best news when we learn that our children have learning challenges and as parents, we'll want to do our best to support our children and help them to thrive. In this video, I'm going to chat with Evelyn on how we can help children with learning challenges, specifically dyslexia and dyspraxia. Hi everyone, I'm Jacinth, a parenting coach and an ex-school teacher and I have here with me Evelyn. We are now at episode 2 of Parenting with Evelyn and we're here to learn some parenting tips from her. Hi everyone, I'm Evelyn and I'm really glad to be here to share my experiences with everyone. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure this will be a very insightful conversation <laughs> because Evelyn is going to share with us exactly how she used these alphabet tiles to help her children learn and they have dyslexia and dyspraxia so we're going to learn a lot of tips from her. If you would like to have these printables, they are free for your download in the HP website. I've added the link in the description below. Yeah. Well, I print also with HP Instant Ink subscription service uh, where HP actually automatically detects the ink levels in my printer and they will send the ink cartridges out to me to my doorstep at no additional cost. Well, talking about savings, I can save up to 50% on ink cartridges uh, with these sustainable ink subscriptions. And right now, HP is offering a three months free trial of its HP Instant Ink subscription if you own or purchase any of HP's eligible printers. So sign up in the link below. Today, we're going to talk about how we help our children learn, specifically if they have dyslexia or dyspraxia. Maybe we'll back it up a bit, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. How did you even find out that your children have these learning challenges? Okay, so my number two, who's a boy, uh, and dyslexia actually hits boys more often than girls, uh, you know, uh, he was not coming along with his reading. What do I mean by that? You know, there were a lot of uh, reading reversals, uh, letter reversals, so his Bs, he would look it at that he will look at it as a D and know your his P's as Q's, six as nine, you know. So this was and the seven was was written the other way around. Mm. Yeah. So this was already uh, the first sign that you know something is quite amiss. And he was not really uh, able to blend words and he will always get confused when you know I put uh, the the word H A T for example and H A T E together and they will be always read as hat. So, you know, there is this additional thing behind, but he doesn't seem to get it that, you know, he has to change the sound of the vowel in front. So we sent him to an uh, educational psychologist and it turns out that, you know, he's indeed dyslexic. Yeah. And um, so I was quite... Uh, I didn't know what to do at that point in time because my daughter, who was the older one, my elder daughter, was able to um, just pick up reading effortlessly. So I didn't really know much about phonics as well. You know, how to uh, teach, you know, the letter sounds I can manage, but how to then teach the blending, the encoding and the decoding. So that was when I realised that I would have to then explicitly teach him phonic rules. And um, that's when I took up a course in Autumn Gillingham uh, Learning Instruction of uh, Teaching Phonics. So I realised that because children learn through their five senses, Right? So the more inputs we give them to their five senses, the better the efficacy of that learning process. So then I printed out these uh, manipulatives for him, you know. So using this very tactile uh, a way of learning, the child is able then to um, use their big movements, their small movements and you know, through sounds and through visually, be able to have more inputs into their sensory system. Okay, Evelyn, do you think you can like show us how to do it? Pretend that I'm your son. Okay. Okay, so how are you going to use these tiles to teach him? Earlier on, you mentioned about the mm -hmm. E at the back. So I think parents will want to know how they can do it to help their kids as well. Okay, yeah. So, you know, usually we start off with uh, learning to read by uh, using CVC words, correct? So we teach the letter sounds. After teaching letter sounds, you know, we will teach, we will put uh, three letters together and usually they will comprise of a consonant, a vowel and another consonant. So the consonants are printed in blue. So for example, you know, in my example here, it will be R and B behind, all right? And the letter O in the middle. So like, it's similar to C-A-T, where A is your um, vowel. So in this case, it is R, O, B. So the child will individually sound out the letters. R, O, B, R, O, B, R, O, B, R, O, B. Right? Yeah, so that's how the child will learn how to read his first words, usually the CVC words we mm. call them. Mm. Yeah. So my child, when I added in a letter behind, an E behind, he wasn't able to figure out that, you know, this sound has to change. Mm. So he would still say Rob. Oh. But I would then, you know, use pictures of a hat behind and then a magic wand behind and tell him that this E here is a special E. He's a magician, 
right? And he will cast a spell on the vowel that's in front of him, making them say their name. So when he looks at this now, all right, when he looks at a word with an ending E sound, he will not think about it as it not being existent, okay? Uh, uh, but it has got a special power to cause the O to say its name. So now he'll remember that this is an O, and I will have to read it as R O B Robe. Wow. Yeah. This so you see, visually, word. he's cued in that, yes. you know, this is a different word. Right? Oh, yeah. This is a brilliant <laughs> idea. I think we'll now introduce Magic E to our kids. I think for, for my kids, I also use these tiles. Uh -huh. And um, other than phonics, I try to play games with mm. them. So giving you guys some ideas, you know, yes. I, they like to form secret messages. So uh -huh. I will use the letters to form um, words. Okay. And I'll jumble the words up. Ah. That's the good thing about having the tiles, right? That's you can right. move it around and they will have to decode the mm. message. So this is one way that you guys can try with yes. the alphabet tiles as well and to get them to be more exposed to letters. That's right. That's yeah. right. And you know, to be familiar with letters, right? And to be friends with them. Yes. Yeah. Because I think, you know, what I realise is for dyslexic children, they tend to um, be literacy adverse mm. Mm, because it's such a strain to read. My child, he would read for a while and then you know, he'll start uh, rubbing his eyes because it really takes a lot more. Uh, I call uh, people with dyslexia, um, people who are neurologically uh, wired differently. Yeah, so they are just not so apt at grasping onto these literacy skills. Mm. Yeah, but it will take them time, but they will get there. So you just need to, you know, make it ease them into that uh, effort of reading and coding and you know uh, decoding. Yeah, so for my child, I will also make it a, a, a game for him. You know, we don't have to read actual words. We can actually make our own crazy words. You know, nonsensical words. So for example, after teaching him how to sound out F uh, P H. All right, which is actually, yeah. right? I say, okay, let's make a sound that goes, fof. So he can be making a sound like that, oh, right, which yeah. actually makes no sense, <laughs> but it's still fun for them. Or he can also do it this way, oh. So right. as long as he gets the sound in the correct sequence, that's all right. And these are crazy words anyway. Yes. So, you know, yeah, it, it's correct. It, it will go, yeah? And gives them confidence, right? Exactly. So how is he in school now? He's much better already. You know, like I said, uh, they are not um, stupid. They definitely are not. My boy is brilliant. You know, it's just that uh, he's challenged literally, literally in the, literal, in the literacy way, yeah? So uh, he just needs a little more time. And now at 15, you know, I would say his reading um, has improved and his writing has also improved. Yeah. Yeah. I think having a positive attitude is actually more important, giving them that resilience to overcome challenges. That's right, yeah. Yes. Yes, also for my second son who's dyspraxic, you know, which is uh, really a uh, coordination and um, developmental disorder, I uh, try to give him more support and give him opportunities um, to uh, uh, help himself, you know, being more bodily aware of his um, and the coordination and his balance. Yeah, mm. so it's all about, you know, giving them the support that they need. Yeah, yeah. so a parent asked, how mm. do you manage children who have learning needs and how do you not compare them to other children? Yeah, so um, I think, you know, it's really important for us to focus on the child himself, you know, appreciate him for who he is and to focus on his strengths. You know, because there may be a thousand and one things that he cannot do, but there is definitely one thing that he can. And just to work on that so that you can build that self-esteem and to support him emotionally as well as he's faced with all these learning challenges, you know. Um, teaching emotional regulation is so important and central to parenting. And so I'm really glad that we'll be talking more about this in our next video. Um, and I think, you know, um, support for uh, ourselves is so important. So, you know, I get into groups that uh, have parents who are in a similar situation as I am, uh, supporting their own children with dyslexia and dyspraxia. And I think, you know, that's important because uh, you can learn tips from them and you can also get encouragement from them. And I think, you know, it is uh, important for us to not expect too much of ourselves because sometimes, you know, we want to try and do so much, but then, you know, and we are not seeing the progress that we wish to see. But you know, as long as you know that you are moving in the right direction and there is progress, then that's commendable and that's enough. So you know, give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah. Yes, progress, right? And yes. also about comparison. Although it's really hard now with social media, mm -hmm. but I think we can be very intentional with the way we speak to our kids. And like you say, focus on what they can do versus what they cannot. Yes. 
That's right. Mm. Let's end off today's session with three takeaways. And as usual, Evelyn, you'll do the first and third, and I'll do the second. Okay, sure. So I think you know it's important that you know, we manage our own expectations and our own mindset about our children. Um, sometimes when we get anxious, you know, we tend to be a little more edgy, and we might you know find ourselves raising our volume a little bit louder. And when we yell, that's when they will just shut off. You know, there's no learning that can take place. So you know, try and give yourself some time to cool down first before you um, approach the child or the situation again. And when the child is in a positive mindset, you know, that's when learning can really go hand in hand together and you know it's more uh, efficient in that way. Mm -hmm. My second takeaway is to provide emotional support for your children and even if they don't have any learning challenges it is still important for us to be there to hold space not to judge them and listen to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. I think that will really help them feel safe with us and um, you know we can then help them overcome any challenges that they face. I don't think our job is to remove all the obstacles mm -hmm. in their life but rather to give them the skills to help them overcome the challenges. Well said, Justin. And you know, um, my third takeaway is focus on things that your child can do, uh, not on the things that you want him to do but he can't. You know, so if let's say your child can't read, it's okay. And if he can draw, get him to draw the things that you know he's reading about or what you're reading to him about. And you know, you can get creative. To, uh, you can get creative with things that you can do with him to help him overcome that situation. Like you know, um, you can start off with printing this uh, printables, yeah, and uh, teach him slowly how to encode and decode. Uh, so there's lots of things, there's a plethora of uh, ideas on the web these days. So you know, there's something that's bound to work for your child. So never give up and just keep trying. Thank you Evelyn for this fruitful discussion. I think we have a lot more to chat about. So in the next video, we are going to talk about Evelyn's secret recipe to manage <laughs> conflicts with four kids and how does she even find time for herself. So we'll see you in episode 3 of Parenting with Evelyn. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Goodbye. See you!